welcome to my channel where we discuss everything and all things politics, especially about the 2023 presidential election held in Nigeria on February 25, 2023, and the result controversially announced on March 1st, 2023. And the outcome of that announcement was challenged at the presidential election petition tribunal, where it was also controversially uh, delivered a verdict that sustained the election of Aswad Bola Mitibu, but they agreed have moved it up to the highest court in the land, to the Supreme Court. So that will bring a final closure to who actually won the 2023 presidential election here in Nigeria. But while we are on it, the, the issue of how did the president emerge the announcement that was done on March 1st, how did the person who was announced as the winner, how did he emerge? Did he win the election? One of those who have made a recent intervention on this matter is Nobel laureate, Professor Wole Shoenka. When he was in South Africa at an event organized to celebrate him, sort of, and uh, he, he insisted categorically that P2B of the Labour Party did not win, and that the P2B was forcing a lie on the country that he won. Of course, that brought a lot of backlash and raised a lot of uh, uh, questions about uh, the Nobel laureate's uh, uh, credibility in terms of uh, intervention in that, this matter. Uh, because, of course, I have shown a video where I exposed the professor to be a very close uh, friend and ally of uh, Bola Tinubu, uh, which means that his intervention was not from a point of uh, patriotism, it's not from a point of nationalism, it's not from the point of uh, Soinka that uh, some people used to know who intervened uh, in critical moments in national life. This was an intervention of a friend to help a friend sustain uh, the, 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 the mandate that was handed to him by the Independent National Electoral Commission, despite the protestations of millions of Nigerians to that. Now, after the backlash that Soyinka got, uh, from that his uh, intervention from South Africa. Uh, he doubled down and even issued a statement a few days later, insisting that P2B, and now he added article to the mix, before he didn't mention article, uh, he added article to the mess, to the mix, that article and P2B donated the victory to Tenebu. Okay. That was the uh, the thing he said. So I wanted to 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 puncture that his logic uh, because that is a uh, it is a fallacy to make that assertion because that that's a fallacy that has been trending. Okay, that have been that have been made. It wasn't a new thing. It, so Inca did not reinvent the wheel by claiming that Peter Obi and that he could donate the presidency to to to. To Tenebu, because uh, if you remember, uh, after the election, when it was obvious that both the local and international observers did not agree with the verdict of INEC that Tenebu won the election, everywhere in the world, around the world, people insist that Tenebu did not win. That was that was the verdict. So what did they do? Uh, the the All Progressive Congress embarked on local and international media campaign. At the local level, was led by Dele Aleke, who invited all the foreign correspondents in Abuja, foreign correspondents of foreign media organizations, to remind them that P2B did not win. And in that interaction with the international media organizations, uh, that are operating from Nigeria. Dela Aleke 
try to puncture the view of those correspondents that P2B won and, or, and, and saw how he was manipulated out by reminding those people that one of the reasons why they won was because the opposition was divided. Okay, that the opposition was divided, that that was the reason why they won, that there is no way a divided opposition could have defeated the All Progressive Congress. It was the same message that was being spread at that time outside the country by the then information minister, Lai Mohammed, who was junketing from United States to United Kingdom interacting with the international media to convince them that Tinubu won the election. And one of the things he was selling, they were, he was, Lai Mohammed was selling all over the world, was that the opposition was divided, that there is no way a divided opposition could have won the election. That is the division in the opposition and all that was one of the key reasons why they won. It was the message that Lai Mohammed spread in the United Kingdom. It was the message that he spread, he spread when he was in Washington, interacting with the media organizations in those countries. I don't know what I mean of you who still remember this. So it was a well-packaged response to convince the international community that they won the election. It was basically that. So they, that was how they tried to uh, sell the idea that they won. So, so Inca now coming up to come and say that P2B and Atiku Abaka donated the presidency. He donated the presidency, the presidency to Tinubu by that their division. He was only regurgitating what had been the the defense of APC imagine victory in the election, giving all the odds against the APC. Even the former president, Muhammad Buhari, in April, when he received, when he received the national chairman, the then national chairman of APC, uh, Abla Adamu, at the presidential villa, the, you can go and check it out. One of the reasons he gave that they won, he said, thank God for the division in the opposition. He said that was why they, they won. But the truth of the matter remains that the reason they won is because the election was not free and fair. And I will get back to that Okay, but there are other things that should be they sh you should not. Ahead of the 2023 presidential election, in a, there is no way in a free and fair election any candidate of the All Progressive Congress could have won the election without manipulation. And I'm saying it with my full chest. There is no way. There is no way in a decent climb, in a reasonable society that APC, given the situation in the country, as at the time of the election, could have won that election and got returned in power. And Nigerians are no exception. They rejected the APC. Even from the alleged doctored result announced by INEC, you can see that Tinubu is a margin president with one of the smallest margin of victory in recent, in recent Nigeria's political history. Since 1999, he was declared winner with only 8.7 uh, million votes. That was what he was they used in declaring him. Go and check what Buhari used in winning. Go and check what uh, Jonathan used in winning. Go and check what Buhari used in winning. Okay, it was the smallest margin ever. Going by even the INEC alleged doctored result, you see that Atiku Abakar got about 6.9 million votes, P2B 6.1 million votes, uh, Rabi Ubu was about 1.4 million votes. If you calculate those votes 
there are about close to 15 million Nigerians that voted against Tinubu. That's assuming that even the 8.7 million people voted for him. So you can see that there is a total rejection of him. More Nigerians de detested his presidency than those who wanted it. It has never happened before in Nigeria. And that was, that's why the government itself, uh, even though it has, is in power, but it suffers from the you know, challenges of legitimacy. Because you can have legitimacy of constitution, but do you have the legitimacy in the hearts and minds of millions of Nigerians, majority of Nigerians? That's another question. Now, there were a lot of odds against the APC that no way they could have won the election in a free and fair election. There is no way. Look at the statistics. As at the time of the election, aside the last minute crisis they created with the change of currency, with the scarcity of fuel, and everything else. Look at their record. Under their, their APC, the, the inflation of the inflation that they made as single digit was already in 20 something, about 22 percent. Inflation, they made it at single digit in 19 in 2015 when they took over. Because they took over Nigeria at inflation rate of between 8 to 9% in 2015. Inflation was 22 point something percent. As at the time the election was about to take place. Unemployment was 33%. The economy was in tatters. Nigeria was the poverty capital and still remained the poverty capital of the world. Nigeria was a killing field. One of the things that the APC said they, will, they are going to do was to get rid of insecurity. In fact, one of the reasons that they emerged and why Nigerians uh, perhaps voted against uh, President Jonathan was that he was a bloody civilian. He couldn't handle security. They brought in a general. But look at what happened. In, Tinubu, in Buhari's first time, 27,311 Nigerians were killed in Buhari's first time. In his second term, 35,800 was killed, making a total of over 63,000 people that were killed under, under the APC. Even Buhari's hometown, home state of Castina, had about nine local governments locked down by bandits. Bandits were terrorizing the whole country. Terrorists took over the whole country. Literally, no part of the country was safe. Who, which party will win election under that climate? That was why there was total rejection of the party from the hearts and minds of Nigerians. So there is no way, there is no reason that APC could have won the election. No rational analysis will show that this is the reason. Why would APC won, win the election of 2023 presidency? Look at the state of the economy. Look at the state of violence, insecurity. Look at the rate of inflation. Look at the rate of the Naira to the dollar when they took over. Look at the price of fuel when they are about to leave. When Buhari was about to exit from the scene. So the odds were against them. So it is, it is, so that's why it's laughable when even a professor of literature will come and claim that uh, that they won. And he was so saying it with his full chest 
that you can say categorically that P2B did not win. Atiku did not win. It was Tinubu that won. But that is against even the observation of credible international observers like the European Union and several other international organizations, including local observers, who insisted that the election did not meet the transparency expected of an election of that magnitude, especially based on the application of technology that was touted as the game changer for that election. The technology was jettisoned in the most important of the elections, presidential election. To this day, nobody has given, INEC have not convinced anybody why the uh, Bivas machine that could be able to capture and transmit National Assembly election results, senatorial results, House of Representative results, fell woefully in transmitting the presidential election result. The election, presidential election result, which is the most national of all the elections, was sabotaged. And then they say it was glitches. When they brought evidence at the presidential election petition court to show that it was no glitches, what did they do? The presidential election petition court judges what did they do was to cancel, cancel the witnesses, delegitimize the witnesses, so that their witness became irrelevant. With that, they were able to maneuver their way and claim that it, uh, there was no glitches. They now told Nigerians that transmission of uh, election results electronically or through the IRF was an option. It's now optional. It is no longer mandatory. At first of Sokoye and the, the INEC chairman, Mahmoud Yakubu, was all over the place at home and abroad telling Nigeria, telling the world that nothing can stop the use of electronic transmission of results. Now these are the facts on the ground. There is no way with the state of the country that the APC could have won a free and fair election. No way. No way. I'm yet to be convinced the reason why any Nigerian, be he from Kastina, the president Buhari's hometown, we are nine local government was under the control of bandits. We would vote for Buhari. Buhari is APC. I can't understand with the level of inflation in the country, the level of unemployment in the country, the level of killings in the country, that anybody, reasonable person in Nigeria wanted APC to continue to be in power. And the election, if it were free and fair, would have expressed that view of Nigerians. Their anger with the APC. That was why when their candidate was announced the winner, on that wee hours of March 1st, there was no celebration in the land. It was like the peace of the graveyard. It was like the announcement that like, somebody died. No celebration anywhere in the country. People were not celebrating. People were literally on a morning state. That was the mood of the country because that was not what they were expecting. But of course, when the idea of electronic transmission of the result of uh, the presidential result occurred, it was obvious that there is no way this election meets the criteria to be considered free and fair. Now, back to the big question. The, the, the division in the People's Democratic Party cause 
Atiku Abakar and Pito Obi to donate the presidency to Tinubu. That is a lie. It is a fallacy to say that the division in the People's Democratic Party, which saw the arrangement, Peter Obi moving to Labour Party and Rabiu Musa Kwankwaso moving to uh, New Nigerian People's Party. That it was the reason why APC won. APC did not win because of that. That was not the reason why they won. I'm, I'm saying this, they won in, in quotes. That was not the reason and cannot be the reason. And I'll tell you why. Now, before I tell you that, if you are new to my channel, you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. Hit the subscription button, hit the notification bell. When you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell, anytime I have a new video, you'll be among the first to know. God bless you. Now, let us go look at the reason why I said the division in the PDP is not was not the reason why Tinubu won or APC won. APC lost, in my own estimation. Nigerians rejected APC despite the division in the PDP. If that election had gone done transparently, Tinubu would have come third. If at all, it would have come third. APC would have emerged third position and it couldn't have gotten come any near any place close to first and second position. If the election was transparent, that's my that's my position. APC could not have gotten first and second, it would have come a distance third. Now, for those who think like Wole Shoinka, that it was the division in the PDP that caused Tinubu to win. Let me draw your mind back to 2019. In 2019, Rabiu Musa Kwankwaso was in PDP. Peter Obi was the vice presidential candidate of the PDP. Atiku Abakar was the presidential candidate of the PDP. Now all these musketeers who like, they all they were all in PDP. Why didn't they win in 2019? Since their division caused them to lose in 2020. Why didn't they win in 2019? They did not win in 2019 because like in 2023, the ruling party was determined to rig the election. Now, if the ruling party was determined to win the election in 2019 and deny the PDP victory, despite the fact that Atiku Abakar, Peter Obi, and Kwankwaso were in the same team, what made you think that if they were in the same team in 2023, that it would have been different? If APC was determined as they were to ensure that they don't hand over power to another party. And they were able to succeed the way they did now, using INEC, allegedly, and other is, is, is governmental institutions to maneuver their way. As, as I put it to you, that even if all of them had been together, and the APC was as determined as they were not to hand over power, to another party, there is no way the opposition party could have won. So the only thing that could have made them to lose was free and fair election. And that was not what we saw in February, 20, February 25. So the same, they, are, they, they, are, they were determined. Look, let me tell you, the APC caused so much crisis in the country. Of course, even as I talk to you, 
The economy of Nigeria is heading south. The Naira is eventually going to change for 1,500 Naira to the dollar. It will get to that. You think it's some joking, but you going to, that it was a, a continuation of the mess they made of the economy since 2015. So these people raked the economy and they were and and the corruption was rampant. Anti-corruption was the sing song of Buhari administration. At least right now, they have gotten quiet in the, on the issue of corruption. You hardly hear uh Tinubu talk about fighting corruption. APC is no longer making no, much noise about corruption. As it was their sing song in 2015. From 20, 2013 until they got to power in 2015, until they were about to leave, it was their sink song. Yet, Transparency International, by their rating, Nigeria witnessed the worst level of corruption between 2015 and 2023. They don't talk about it. And because of the kind of corruption that took place, they were ready to do anything to stop the opposition from taking over power. And that includes, if they have to, compromising the institution that handles the election and everything else. So when anybody like Suinka or anybody tells you that Atiku Abakar, P2B, it was the, uh, the division in the PDP that made PDP not to have won, it is not true. It was, that's not true. These people were in one party in 2019. They lost and the reason they lost in 2019 was the same reason they lost in 2022. Reagan. There is no two ways about it. If the election was free and fair, there is no way the APC could have won. That's my position. So Wally Serenka got it wrong. Wally Serenka was only regurgitating the APC uh, claim on why they won. It wasn't anything new. So Inca did not reinvent the wheel when he said that uh, uh, Peter B and Atiku Abaka donated the presidency to Tinobu. But one thing that must be said anyway is that it would have been better if Atiku Abaka and Rabi Musa Kwankwasu were not in that race. Perhaps their, their capacity to rig would have been reduced if there were two, only two candidates, at, uh, Peter Obi and uh, Tinubu. Perhaps he would have been able to contain their capacity of rigging the election. But then you never can tell if an INEC that was able to, to, to change his mind to start speaking from both sides of the mouth, still handle the election. But the truth of the matter remains, Atiku Abakar and Rabi Musa Kwankosu had no business contesting the 2023 presidential election after eight years of President Muhammad Buhari from the north running the country. What Atiku Abakar and Rabi Musa Kwankosu wanted to tell Nigerians was that after eight years of Buhari, it was okay if another Northerner to come and do eight years. In a multi-ethnic and multi-religious society like Nigeria, it's un it was unacceptable to a whole lot of Nigerians. But that notwithstanding, their presence in the race was not the reason why Tinubu won. No. Even despite all this division, if the election had gone free and fair, everybody would have seen that Nigerians wanted a change and that they wanted a man who will be a listening president, a man who will genuinely fight corruption. And the only candidate that was talking about fighting corruption in that election was Peter Obi of the Labour Party. And he was the one that gave a lot of hope to Nigerians.
that a new Nigeria was possible. But I like to say no, they, they prefer the old order of corruption, nepotism, and what have you. Thank you for watching this video. And uh, if you are new to my channel, you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. Hit the subscription button, hit the notification bell. When you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell, anytime I have a new video, you'll be among the first to know. God bless you. And please don't forget to like this video because when you like it, God will rank it high and recommend it for more people. Thank you and God bless you and yours.